And good morning. I guess we can still officially call it morning. It's still Andrew. morning. Absolutely. It's still morning. Along with Hanker Ledesma, my name is Roland J. Reese. Uh, be proud to be bringing you part of today's Bernie ISD Holiday Tournament here on the campus of Champion High School, where the Champion Chargers now getting set to face the Gregory Portland Wildcats in uh, the first action they're going to see in uh, this year's tournament. Great matchup, too, Roland, to start. Gregory Portland coming in 17-2, and two, champion 14-3. and three. And so as these teams get set for district play, nice way to practice, if you will, before district play begins. Absolutely. Gregory Portland handling the opening tip. We'll check the starters for you here in just a moment. Right now, the leading scorer on the team, that is Sean Williams. As he puts Gregory Portland on the board, it's 2-0 Wildcats. He's a big young man, Roland. Goes 6'7", weighs 230. Look for him to get the ball tons for these Wildcats. Now on the dribble, this is Georgelos, Charlie Georgelos, as he's got a brother Nick on this squad as well. Back out running point, number four, Mason Wyatt. As he tries to go inside, and a whistle and a foul, they're going to get Davian Guevara. He picks up his first, first team foul on Gregory Portland. You mentioned Charlie Georgelos. Nice back cut there to draw the foul. And so champion, another possession, inbounding from underneath its own basket. Although the pass going cross court here to set things up. Mason White playing catch right side. Now off to Charlie Georgelos. White on the dribble. Up off glass, no, but a foul. Quinn Grable's going to shoot two. Attacking inside the lane. And then when help came over, as we take a look at champion head coach, Chris Adamek, fantastic job with this Chargers team. A one-time Harlandale High School boys basketball coach. Oh, I remember that well. Free throw falls true for Quinn Grable, who, by the way, is leading the team uh, with 13 points per game. Second one falls true, and we're tied at one at uh, two apiece. Dribble right side, Guevara. This one's stolen. It's Mason Wyatt taking it down coast to coast, and it's good. Champion creating some havoc. They're in a zone here, 2 3 to start today's ball game. Try to swing it right side. Felan back out, three point attempt. No for Guevara, and the rebound comes off to the Chargers. You see Sean Williams drawing a crowd in there for Gregory Portland. Guevara getting a good look because Williams demands so much attention inside. Here's a three-point attempt. Falling just off the back of the rim for Briggs Jones, and the rebound comes off to Gregory Portland. Pass swatted away and stolen. Mason Wyatt once again. Quick hands up off the glass, and good. Wyatt doing a nice job of utilizing that second step. Not quite a Euro step, because it wasn't much of a change of direction, but he did change pace with that second step. Now Guevara on the dribble. He'll get the ball back. Talking about Wyatt, he's got four of the Chargers points. That time, three-point attempt falls true for Trevor Jones. And it's all of a sudden 6-5 champion. Uh, Jones doing a nice job of knocking down that open three-point look. Pass outside, White setting things up, trying to work it to the inside. Baseline, three-point attempt. This one good for Mason Wyatt. And Fuego with seven points in the quarter. Yeah, Mason off to a good start. He's a senior, a big part of this champion program over the last several years. Try to work it inside. Briggs Jones comes away with the Aaron Gregory Portland pass. Once again, Wyatt, three-point attempt. Why not? Showing us the three afterwards. Putting a punctuation on a fantastic start individually and team-wide for this champion Charger basketball club. Wyatt's got 10 early on, 10 of the Chargers' 12 points as they have a 12-5 lead now over Gregory Portland. Hey, you can tell <laughs> the way he's starting out. You know, Mason couldn't wait to get out here after the 
after the Christmas holiday saying, hey, let's get let's go play some hoops. <laughs> Enough time off. He is making up for whatever time uh, they got idle there in between the last day of school and, and today's ball game. Fantastic start. Gregory Portland off to a pretty decent start themselves, if not for the hot shooting, though, of Mason White. This thing a lot closer. Now, as it stands, we're just underway, 12-5 to 5 early. But thanks to Wyatt Champion, really, really off to a fantastic start. Had a chance to talk to the gentleman on your screen right there who's Sean Armstrong. He's a head basketball coach there for Gregory Portland. And he's telling me a little bit about the big man, number zero, Sean Williams, who's uh, leading the team. He's uh, averaging about 20 and 10 a game. He gets the ball now, swings it out just past the three-point mark. That's the second three-pointer of the game for Trevor Jones. And our score now 12-8, champion. Dribble back outside, Briggs Jones. Over to Wyatt. Cross court, Wyatt gets the ball back. Right side, Baden Burdick. Good movement of the basketball. There's a three-point attempt that time coming from Grable. No good there. And Gregory Portland comes away with a rebound. Inside, finds somebody all alone. What a swat that time by Charlie Georgelos. Yeah, that was a fantastic look inside by Williams, an even better block by Georgelos. Yeah, they found uh, Russell Escamilla all by himself under the basket. Good presence of mind to come back defensively for Georgelos. And we've reached the halfway point of the first quarter. Champion out to a 12 8 lead as Gregory Portland swings the ball around the perimeter. is Maddox Merritt. So they try to come inside, find a man. Offensive foul. And they got an offensive foul that time. Sean Williams picking up his first. That's great ball movement for, for the Wildcats. Doing a nice job of staying patient, swinging that ball around, trying to find the holes in that 2-3 zone. Executed it well, everything down to the offensive foul on Sean there. Three team fouls on Gregory Portland here in the first. Back outside, three-point attempt coming. This just off the rim, no good. And the rebound comes away to Jeremy Labyrinth for Gregory Portland. Trevor Jones on the dribble. Left side, Barrett. Now swinging it right side, trying to go underneath. Three-point attempt once again. Big block that time by Grable. And guess who with the ball? <laughs> Mason Wyatt. I don't think he's missed yet, Roland. He's, I, I think he's hit every – I was just going to say, I think he has hit every single shot he's taken. And he's got 12 of the Chargers' 14 points to get things started off early. Here's a three-point attempt. This one off the rim, no. And the Chargers come away with a rebound. Georgelos on the dribble, up off glass, no, but a whistle and a foul. Nice move there by Georgelos, kind of a hesitation. Got the defense to slow down a little bit and then took off toward the basket. Able to draw the contact. A little bit of a late whistle, but the right call. Maddox Barrett on the foul for Gregory Portland. Wildcats with 14 fouls as Charlie Georgelos to the free throw line. First free throw attempt hits the front of the rim and bounces away as Davian Guevara checks back into the game for Gregory Portland. Second one rims around no. And the rebound comes back off to champion. Here's Wyatt trying to set up the play. Left-handed dribble. Off to Georgelos. Up off glass, no for Burdick. And Gregory Portland away with the rebound. This Russell Escamilla. Running point. Left side, Guevara. Escamilla playing catch, try to work it inside to Williams. Nothing doing there as the ball's batted away. And Champion comes away with it. Once again, third time a charm 
for Braden Burdick as he gets his first bucket of the game. 16-8 champion. Burdick, a nice job of waiting for a seam and then taking full advantage when it came. Defensively, Roland, champion doing a fantastic job of crowding with that 2-3 zone, Mr. Sean Williams, who has the ball now and has to get rid of it. Gregory Portland back outside, Escamilla. Working it right side, back to Escamilla, now swings it around the other direction. Champion defense is swarming. Escamilla left-handed shot, no good. And the rebound comes away to champion. Right now, Georgelos on the dribble. Good Kicks swing. Here's a three-point attempt. This one, no. I think that's a first miss for Wyatt, <laughs> as we were talking about. <laughs> Ball goes out of bounds. Is now getting set to check in Trey Huntsmith, along with number 22, Cole Reha, a name we talked about quite a bit during football season. Christian Herrera also in for the Chargers. And they have the basketball. Ball bounces away. Huntsmith, here's a three-point attempt. George Lowe's, this one good. Charlie George Lowe's with his first bucket of the game. Champion extends that lead out to 19-8. So let's see now with Baton Burdick and Quinn Grable now on the bench to see if this 2-3 defense keeps that same intensity. And I say that because those two young men did a fantastic job of sandwiching that young man, Sean Williams, at Tur the top of that zone. Turnaround jumper for Williams. And the paint is good. 19-10. Now just about 20 seconds left to go here in the opening stanza. Charlie Georgelos on the dribble. Trying to set things up as they work for the last shot. That is the Chargers working for the last shot. Taking it into the lane. Tries to go off glass, no good. They're gonna say this out of bounds. And it'll be Gregory Portland basketball. He's now getting set to check into the ball game. Joshua Marquez, 5'11 senior. Gregory Portland inbound. Three-point attempt just short for Trevor Jones, and we've got one in the books. Our score champion 19, Gregory Portland 10. We'll be back with more in just a moment right here on the Chargers Network. You have access to a reality-bending GVTC AR experience. Go to levelup.gvtc.com. Select either a Ranger, Charger, Warrior, or Greyhound. Place your athlete in whatever environment you want to interact with them. Change the angle you see them by moving your phone. You can even screen capture a portrait with your athlete. Tap the Explore GVTC button for even more cutting edge products that can help connect you to the world. So, where are we eating? With GVTC's Blazing Fast Fiber Speeds. Three and a half stars, not a chance we try anything under four. You might feel like other things in life are taking a little longer than before. We may not be able to speed up your dinner decisions, but we can provide fast and consistent premium Wi-Fi to search all the available options. Enjoy the GVTC difference. GVTC, connecting you. Bernie ISD Holiday Tournament here on the campus of Champion High School. Wishing everybody the very best this holiday season. Hope you had a Merry Christmas as we're a couple of days out now and we're heading over to 2024. Where there's a lot of high school sports action coming your way. We invite you to join us and not miss one minute all season long. Be champion basketball to start the second quarter. Part of extended sports coverage here on GVTC, Roland. So excited to bring folks much more of the Hill Country in terms of the sports scene. Absolutely. You can, you can see now, Roland, I'm sorry. Apologies. I don't mean to step over you. I was just going to say you can see now with, with char the Chargers going to their bench, a loss of that continuity, not as fluid, which is to be expected when you have several reserves on the court at the same time. Inside pull-up jumper that time for Herrera, no, and the rebound comes off to Gregory Portland. Trevor Jones, right side, Davian Guevara as he tries to set something up. 
Guevara to Jones, working it inside. And Hadley not is all by himself, but the defense collapsed on him just in time. Save a shot. Jones, Linares. As they try to work inside, here's a three-point attempt. This one off the back of the rim, no, and Champion comes away with the rebound. Herrera back to Logan Scott, who's in the game. Scott left-handed dribble, trying to work it inside to Reha. Nothing doing there as the ball is stolen by Sean Williams. Williams tries to go coast to coast. Up off the board. They're going to count it. They, they are going to count it. Yeah. Called it a block. So Sean Williams will get an and one as we take a look at the replay right here on GBTC. Sean is going lefty. Tough call. Looked like Joshua Marquez had pretty good positioning. But unlike a call in that first quarter that went against Sean Williams, in which he was caught for a charge, his only foul to this point, the 6-7 Big man who's listed as a small forward, even though he's the biggest kid on the court. <laughs> Briggs Jones checking in right now for champion. Yeah, Williams now with the line trying to complete a three-point play. His team down by nine early in the second quarter. Now getting set to check in for the Chargers, Alex Ross. Ross, 6-1 junior. By the way, first foul on Marquez. First team foul as well. Just right now, Gable with the dribble. Over to Georgelos. Tries to take it in paint, up off glass. No, and the rebound comes away to Re Williams and Gregory Portland. Down court is Escamilla. Swing it left side to Jones, trying to work it inside to Williams. They Find a seam, Williams up off glass, no, and champion away with a rebound. Inside, they got Grable. Chargers swing the ball left side. This is Briggs Jones on the dribble. Back out to Herrera. Work it inside, trying to go up and off glass was Grable. Nothing doing there as that one's knocked away. Gregory Portland comes away with the basketball. Escamilla back outside to Jones. They're playing catch as Guevara now on the dribble. He looks inside to Escamilla. Yeah, he's out there among all those trees. That's one thing about the Chargers. They've got that height advantage. Turnaround jumper there for Sean Williams is good. He's got four in the quarter, eight for the game, and Whistling the timeout right now on the floor with 5-12 remaining here before halftime. Well, speaking of height, Sean Williams, really the only young man on this Gregory Portland club that, that really has a size advantage to get his shot off. The Wildcats are doing a fantastic job of being patient and surveying that champion zone defense. They're moving the ball extremely well. The thing is, when you combine the Chargers swarming and getting the, the ball in a hurry, which is a coach's dream when you're running the 2-3, you combine that with the fact that Williams, really the only young man on this team who's taller on the court, who's got any playing time, who's taller than, let's say, six feet. He stands six seven. He's done a nice job of being able to create his shot there when he's at the free throw line or free throw line extended. And you know, it's interesting to note that nine of these 13 players on this Chargers squad are all over six feet tall. Yeah, they've got the height advantage. It's just that Gregory Portland, if that's coming back now toward the Wildcats, Gregory Portland has the tallest player of either of the two teams. And Baden Burdick, who is 6'1", just out of his reach there. So he goes out of bounds. It'll be Gregory Portland basketball. Here's Russell Escamilla, the inbound to Davian Guevara. Guevara brings the ball across the timeline. Swing it to right side. Linares, they work it inside to Williams. Turn around jumper. This one good. Six in the quarter for Sean Williams, 10 for the game. And just like that, Gregory Portland has cut it to two. 
It's 19 to 17, champion. Left side, here's Georgelos on the dribble, brings it other side, trying to swing it around. Finds Burdick. Back out to Grable. Cross court, three point attempt, Georgelos, no. But right back there for the rebound and to put it back is Briggs Jones. Fantastic job as Bernie Champion now goes into a press. Full court and they cause the turnover. So here come the Chargers back offensively. Here's a three point attempt coming for, from Champion. No good as the ball hits off the back of the rim, but a whistle and a foul. And Charlie Georgelos, you see here on the replay. This is the previous one, this is the bucket by Briggs Jones. Fantastic job of before he even came down with it, putting it back up and in. On this most recent play, the Wildcats called for the penalty foul as Georgelos went up for the offensive putback. That's right, they got Tyler Pearson on that foul. He picks up his first, first team foul for Gregory Portland. Here's a three-point attempt coming. Once again, off the rim, no good. Speaking of Pearson, he comes away with a rebound for Gregory Portland. Back out, Davian Guevara to set things up as Coach Sean Armstrong giving instruction from the sideline. This one a turnover. It'll be champion ball on the side. As Mason Wyatt inbounds to Charlie Georgelos. Now the Wildcats with a little full court press. Some pressure at least before they got to half court. Back outside, three-point attempt coming. Once again, this rattles around the rim for Jones. No good. Good swing. Champion gets the rebound. George Lowe's three-point attempt is no. Might have been a bit much trying to play defense that time. I think they're going to get George Lowe's for the foul. Evident from the early going, Roland, both these teams very well coached. Champion does a fantastic job of going good to great, to use a Spurs mantra. Always very good with that extra pass. Gregory Portland fantastic in being patient with this 2-3 zone. That one knocked out of bounds, going to remain in Wildcat possession. Mason Wyatt getting his hand on it defensively, but finishing that thought on the Wildcats, not getting rattled by this 2-3 zone, and it's helped because their big guy, Sean Williams, finding a comfort zone six points in the second quarter as they've drawn to within four. Guevara now on the dribble. Off to Pearson, back to Guevara. About 2.40 left to go here before halftime. Gregory Portland, they're swinging the ball around for far side. That's a three-point attempt coming from Pearson, no good. But the Wildcats get the lucky bounce and retain possession. Pearson on the dribble. Finds Davian Guevara. Trying to work it inside to Williams, they do. Williams tries to find a cutting. Tasi Linares off his hands and no. Good idea for Sean. He was trying to get it to Tasi. Uh, tough crowd in there though for Tasi. Only stands 5'8". But good look in terms of finding a guy, a teammate right underneath the basket. Christian Herrera checks into the match now for the Chargers. And they have the basketball. Here's Grable on the dribble. Far side three-point attempt is good for the aforementioned Christian Herrera. And our score now 24-17 as Champion has opened up that lead in seven. Champion, a fantastic job of quick a shoot, of catch and shoot. They don't need much space to be able to get the shots off. Most of the perimeter players are able to get it off pretty quickly. Escamilla to Guevara. This is just a little bit too tall for Escamilla. They're going to get him for a backcourt violation. That will be a Gregory Portland turnover, and it will be champion Charger basketball with a minute 39 left to go here before halftime. With the Chargers regulars, their starters coming back into the ball game, they've taken back control. The game now going at their pace. Good God. Absolutely found a 
trailing Grable, who unable to put it in with the rebound of the putback for Herrera. Great cut by Grable and a fantastic look by Mason Wyatt. Five for the quarter for Christian Herrera. 26-17, champion out in front. Here's a three-point attempt that falls true for Jeremy Labyrinths. And that's going to be big for Gregory Portland the rest of the way. Sean Williams has, has found a niche inside. Um, he's going to do what he does here throughout this ball game. What would really serve the Wildcats well is if they can get that perimeter shooting from out here around the three-point line and beyond, really open things up inside. So far, that champion D has harassed him to the point where the perimeter players for the Wildcats haven't been able to get good looks or at least comfortable looks. So it'll be big for them to knock out, knock down a couple from the outside. Maddox Barrett checks in for the Wildcats. So we play with just about a minute left to go here before halftime. George Los on the dribble, left side. Quinn Grable. Herrera, Grable playing catch, now off to Wyatt. Charlie Georgelos. Three-point attempt. This one falls true for Christian Herrera. Big quarters. He's got eight. And that lead now nine for champion. The and Chargers doing... Go ahead, Ron. Go oh, ahead. no. Just like that, he picks up his first foul. I was just going to say the Chargers doing a fantastic job here of, of settling in. And that lead was cut down to two. Didn't lose their poise. Stayed with it. Got back to what they wanted to do as the regulars came back in. Underneath Escamilla, this is Trevor Jones. Back to Escamilla. Barrett. Escamilla working it inside to Williams. Left-handed dribble up off glass and good. He'll go to the line for the and one. That ended up working out really well for the Wildcats, Sean Williams inside getting the and one has a chance to complete that three-point opportunity. Christian Herrera second foul of the game, 14 foul. And now with just seconds remaining here before halftime, Wyatt on the dribble, working for that last shot, up off glass, no. Five for the rebound, and we've reached the halfway point of our contest as champion takes a 29-22 lead over the Gregory Portland Wildcats and we'll be back with third quarter action in just a moment. You're enjoying this broadcast on the Charger Network and for our friends with GVTC. So, where are we eating? With GVTC's blazing fast fiber speeds, Three and a half stars, not a chance we try anything under four. You might feel like other things in life are taking a little longer than before. We may not be able to speed up your dinner decisions, but we can provide fast and consistent premium Wi-Fi to search all the available options. Enjoy the GVTC difference. GVTC, connecting you. Hey, Gage. What's up, Coach Ellis? Hey, grab a seat real quick. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about some of the stuff I'm seeing on social media. And I gotta tell you, it's awesome. This GBTC experience, it's, man, it's really cool. You know, it's drip. GBTC is connecting you to Charger Gage Goldberg in a reality bending way. Scan the QR code for exclusive access and let the power of GVTC level up your reality in a whole new way. So, where are we eating? With GBTC's blazing fast fiber speeds. Three and a half stars, not a chance we try anything under four. 
you might feel like other things in life are taking a little longer than before. Ooh, what sounds better, La Fiesta or Dumpling Palace? Ooh, uh, Dumpling Palace. Ew, gross. We may not be able to speed up your dinner decisions, but we can provide fast and consistent premium Wi-Fi to search all the available options. Enjoy the GVTC difference, and please be patient with things that may have seemed to... Wait, what are we gonna watch? Slow down a bit. <laughs> GVTC, connecting you. GVTC is crushing the boundaries again on community involvement and local athlete support. You have access to a reality-bending GVTC AR experience that will connect you to your school's athlete within the GVTC service area. On your phone, go to levelup.gvtc.com. Once there, touch Start Experience Now. Select either a Ranger, Charger, Warrior, or Greyhound. Now you're ready to touch Start Experience on your athlete's page. Allow access to your camera and touch the purple continue button. And here is where you will place your athlete in whatever environment you want to interact with them, wherever, whenever. Scale them and rotate them to match the scene you place them in. Holding my ground on the field and online. With GBTC Fiber Internet, I'm unstoppable. Now, change the angle you see them by moving your phone. You can even screen capture a portrait with your athlete. It's fast, powerful, and always on point. When you're through, tap the Explore GVTC button for even more cutting edge products that can help connect you to the world. I'm Chris Cooley from the GVTC Foundation, uh, Vice President of our Foundation uh, and also a Chairperson of our uh, Scholarship Committee. We're here to congratulate you as the 2023 GVTC Foundation Vocational Technical $7,500 Scholarship. Congratulations to you, Carson. Thank you guys so much. This means so much yeah. to me. But we're really here to congratulate you as the winner of the 2023 yeah. Olga Armstrong $15,000 scholarship from the GBTC Foundation. Congrats to you. Congratulations. So this is, you know, a little bit different. Uh, you know, your, your father was able to be here and this is a surprise to him as well. Yeah. He, uh, we, we arranged for, uh, for him to be over here today uh, in person in our office. So I was glad we were able to coordinate this and, and thank you to Deanna as well. Do you have any words to share right now or are you speechless? <laughs> I don't. That was like, oh. thank you so much. But you're really here for us to announce you as the winner of the 2023 GBTC Foundation Richie T. Thorles $25,000 scholarship. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations again. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate you very much. Tell us what your plans are after graduation. Uh, after graduation, I'm hoping to start my own restaurant where I will be uh, the lead chef, where I will be able to give back to uh, our community. Tell them where you're going to plan to go to college. So no. next year, I am going to college at uh, Augusta Escoffier in Austin. I do plan on having a part-time job in college. Um, I'm not sure what that will be yet, but I have been trying to get as many scholarships as I can to offset the cost of college, which is around $130,000. So thank you all, all so right. much. Well, absolutely. Well, we're, we're honored to have you as a recipient. fun part of being a dad, but I have to speak to you about something that is uh, concerning me. Concerning you? Yeah. Heard you and your mother talking about this Arlo fella, and uh... Arlo? I wasn't eavesdropping. 
He's always watching you. His videos are secure. This guy sounds like a creep. It's not. Your privacy is very important to me. And I think you need to make better decisions when it comes to boys. And this Arlo is not a boy that I think you should be dating. You're dating someone? Yeah. Arlo. I heard you guys talking about him. Arlo. Yeah. Dad. Arlo's the name of the new security cameras that we got from our service provider. We were talking about how great they are and how safe they make me feel. Mm. Arlo's not a boy. Well. Uh, that's a boy's name. Oh, boy. Ah, uh, not a boy. Apparently, we just learned that. It's a camera. Named after a boy. Why don't you name it Peter? GVTC is once again leading the way to connect you to Charger linebacker Gage Goldberg. Hi, Mom. See Gage in this exclusive augmented reality experience where you choose your camera angle and place Gage in your reality. I'm really excited to be able to represent my team and thank you GVTC for letting me come out here. Scan the QR code for access and let GVTC bring this Charger experience to connect you to the power of GVTC. Back for third quarter action here in our second, officially second game of the Bernie ISD Holiday Tournament where the champion Chargers are out to a 29-22 lead over Gregory Portland and the Wildcats will have the basketball here to start the second half. Then on the dribble, here's Guevara. Swinging it to Jones, back out to Guevara. Guevara trying to work it inside. Escamilla back out to Jones, mishandles. That'll be a turnover, and it'll be champion basketball. Yeah, that champion defense has been fantastic all game long throughout that first half of just getting to the ball in a hurry, working off that 2-3 zone, not allowing any of these Gregory Portland shooters to get any kind of a comfort level. Wyatt to Georgelos, here's a three-point attempt that falls true for Briggs Jones. Jones with five in the game. And Champion opens up a 10-point lead at 32-22 over Gregory Portland. Briggs has a nice stroke. Just smooth, not in a hurry. Good result on that last shot. Villan. Guevara trying to work it inside to Escamilla. They're trying to find Williams, but he mishandled the ball and turns over possession to Champion. Wyatt swinging the ball around right side. Grable back over to Burdick. Swing it around the perimeter. Here's another, it looked like a three-point attempt. I was giving him credit already before he let the ball go. As they try to work it back inside to Briggs Jones and out of bounds. Now checking in for Gregory Portland, number 24. That is Miles Bayless. Another look here at that three-pointer by Briggs Jones. Fantastic job of using that back screen, creating some space. George Los. With a bucket here to get his scoring started here in the second half. He's got a pair, five for the game. 34-22 champion. Yeah, nice. Georgia loses games pretty versatile here. Williams kicks the ball out. Williams by far the tallest player on the floor, but he's having some trouble there inside as the three-point attempt runs off the Front of the rim, no good, and Champion comes away with the rebound. Seems like Williams is having trouble getting posi positioning inside. As that defense is just uh, kind of collapsing on him there. Here's a three-point attempt, George Los. No. The rebound comes off to Burdick for Champion. George Los, three-point attempt coming. This one good. Briggs Jones once again. Pair of threes here. In the third quarter, and Champion opens up that lead to 37 22. I'm going to talk to our esteemed Mr. Do Well Everything, Bo Wick, and see if we can't perhaps get a replay of the previous Gregory Portland possession. Because I think you, you talked about Sean Williams here, Roland. I think, I think one of the issues that really Gregory Portland's kind of had to deal with throughout the first half and early here 
in the third quarter is no other player outside of Sean Williams really feels comfortable once they get the ball. It, it looks like they need a little bit more space in order to get a shot off. And so because the champion defense has been swarming at such a great rate, they haven't had a chance uh, to do that. And so the Wildcats, because of that, everything is funneling in to Williams. And so when the Charger defense is setting that 2-3 zone and they got Quinn Grable at the top and they got Baden Burdick there on the, the back line waiting there in the middle, they're doing a nice job of crowding Williams. And so Williams, when he looks out, he'll make that pass and he'll find an open teammate, but the shot is not being released in a, in a quick fashion. And so that allows the Charger defense to swarm quickly and it's really stalled the perimeter play of this Gregory Portland O. I, I agree, and they're just not allowing penetration from Williams to get any deeper in the paint. And that's one thing that's been very beneficial defensively for the champion Chargers. Once again, they try that. Ball swatted away, and Chargers take possession. On the dribble, up off glass is Burdick, but a whistle and a foul. See who they're going to get now. They're going to get number one, which is Davian Guevara. He picks up his second. That the first team foul. And so it's as these teams get lined up for district play role, and I also committing a, a pre-district preseason no-no as well in calling, calling for that replay. Don't do it. Don't do it automatically. Although be in working with Rick Productions over the years, that just came to be one of those assumptions of they're going to they're going to have it just because I call for it. Doesn't work that way. It's not magic. Outside three-point attempt. This rattles around the rim. No, and Chargers come away with a rebound. Here's Georgelos. Here's a three-point attempt from Georgelos. No good. As we welcome to the microphone. A gentleman who's certainly not a stranger to being here on the court and coaching teams. The athletic director of the Bernie ISD, Stan Leach, with us. Good Hi, guys. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. I was letting y'all get started. I was over uh, at the scores table so I could w actually watch the game. So. <laughs> George Lowe's on the dribble. Takes the ball back from Wyatt. Now up off glass, and I think they're going to get Williams as Briggs Jones will be going to the line, and that is the case. Second foul on Sean Williams. Second team foul. And Briggs Jones to the line. Good looking squad, all, uh, all good size, and uh, certainly with the nice touch to put the ball in, Coach. Yes. Coach Adamack, he's very fortunate. He's got everybody can shoot the ball. And early on, I've been very impressed by Charlie. Uh, I tell you, being the best player and being so unselfish, he has created lots of opportunities for other people. Uh, and they've, they've taken advantage of it. So that's early on what I've been impressed with is number 14. Pair of free throws that time. You may call this one a kicked ball. He's got a versatile game, Coach. Charlie he, does. He does. Uh, you know, he's been with us uh, since his freshman year, and he's been on some great teams. He was on the state semifinal team, and, and a lot of our success has to do with him. But it's, it's been neat to see him even as a leader where he could be more selfish, and he's not. Pass inside Williams as he tries to go up off class. No, and whistled a foul. I think they're going to get uh, Herrera, and that'll be... His third first team foul for champion. And as Sean Williams goes to the line, we'd be remiss as Coach Leach joins the broadcast if we didn't mention that he would know a thing or two, specifically two in terms of very long playoff runs. Coach Leach twice taking a Bernie team to the state semifinals, 1990 and 2008. And a couple of years ago, Coach Dan Leach named one of the 20 greatest coaches in Texas high school basketball by the UIL. So a belated congratulations on that, that's Coach, well, even though it comes absolutely. a couple of years later. Well, that's one of those things. It's 
never too late to say congratulations. It's quite an honor and one that we've obviously we're proud of. And uh, you mentioned the 90 team and the 08 team, and that was also in the second highest classification that, right. that we're proud of too. And, and then uh, the silver medal, uh, beating a region three team is also something we'll hang our hat on. Well, thank you. Charlie Georgelo, who we spoke about, just nailing a three and extending that champion lead to 44-22 over Gregory Portland as they try to work it inside to Williams. Nothing doing there, and the ball slapped away and out of bounds. The Wildcats will retain possession. 3.09 remaining here in the third quarter. Well, fantastic job. Georgelo initially swatting that pass away, and then Briggs Jones with the block. So fantastic team defense for these Chargers. That's side, Lidatis playing catch with Bayless. Here's a three-point attempt. This one falls true for Trevor Jones. That's his third three of the game. He's got nine. Lead now 19 for champion. They pass down to find the open man. Do so. Coming across. Herrera on the dribble. Back out, swinging it right side, three-point attempt just off of Wyatt. And Gregory Portland coming away with the rebound. Bayless back out to Jones. Jones and Bayless playing catch is a kicked ball. What good defensive presence there from Georgia Los to thwart the play. Talk about this throughout the next couple of possessions, but this Charger offense just really impressive in terms of not only ball movement, but their spacing as well. Well, that's a great comment because that's what they count on. And when everybody can handle and everybody can shoot, uh, it's, it, that spacing is just deadly. And that's what equalizes them. That's why they don't really have to have a big as such. A uh, big would foul them up. <laughs> everybody laughs say, well, just what if they had a big, and of course they would take one, but it would also change a lot of what they do, too. But a good size, too, as well, Coach, as we were mentioning. You got nine players on this squad, all over six foot tall. Yes. George Los. Back outside, the red on the dribble. This one knocked away and stolen by Gregory Portland. Jones, George Los gets it back <laughs> for champion. They got a two-on-one off to Herrera, off glass, no, and they're going to get Belan for his first foul of the ball game. That play might summarize Georgia Lowe's in a nutshell. Yeah. He's on his bottom. Here come the Wildcats storming down the court, and what does Georgia Lowe's do? He, he reaches that arm out thinking maybe, just maybe, I can do enough to disrupt the play. He not only disrupts it, he gets possession back ball for his ball club. I appreciate you mentioning that. He's, he's special. Uh, he does all the little things. And then being the best player, it, it's great when he, you know, makes everybody better. You know, that's one of the things that, you know, Pop always talks about too is, is the guys that are really good are the ones that make everybody else on their team better. And that's hard to find. I have a feeling you you could find a spot for him on your 90 and 2018, oh. huh, Coach? <laughs> I'd, I'd find a spot on 14 on any team we've ever had. Not just uh, his basketball, but uh, just uh, he's a character guy, too. And I know sometimes that's overemphasized, but with Charlie, it is all true. Rebound comes away to champion. By the way, Trey Hutspeth in now for the Chargers. It's Tyler Pearson. Checks in for Gregory Portland. Speaking of Hudspeth, his shot hits the front of the rim, no good. He gets the ball back there following a charge of rebound. It's Charlie Georgelos on the dribble. Off to Burdick. A game of catches. We're now the final seconds of the third quarter. The champions built a 46 25 lead, 21 points. This one thrown out of bounds. And Gregory Portland will have possession. 
Rare mistake, one of the rare ones that Charlie has made today. Gregory Porter throwing a second defender at him, trying to get the ball out of his hands here in the waning seconds of the third quarter. Side ball almost stolen as Berta gets his hand on it. We'll go out of bounds with just under eight seconds left to go here in the third quarter, a third quarter that has been all champion. As they built that lead to 21. Up off glass and good for Sean Williams. Actually, his first points of the second half. And we've got three in the books. Our score champion, 46. Gregory Portland, 27. We'll be back with the final quarter here in just a moment. We're enjoying basketball here on the Chargers Network and GBTC. So, where are we eating? With GBTC's Blazing Fast Fiber Speeds. Three and a half stars, not a chance we try anything under four. You might feel like other things in life are taking a little longer than before. Ooh, what sounds better, La Fiesta or Dumpling Palace? Ooh, uh, Dumpling Palace. Ew, gross. We may not be able to speed up your dinner decisions, but we can provide fast and consistent premium Wi-Fi to search all the available options. Enjoy the GVTC difference, and please be patient with things that may have seemed to... Wait, what are we gonna watch? Slow down a bit. <laughs> GVTC, connecting you. Welcome you back to the Bernie ISD Holiday Tournament. Coach Stan Leach, the fantastic Roland Jay alongside Heck Ledesma, bringing you fourth quarter action of a game between Bernie Champion and Gregory Portland that has been all chargers in this third quarter. Took control early. The Wildcats made a run before Charlie Georgelos, who's standing right in front of us, set to inbound, and company took over in quarter number three. George Lowe's three at half, eight for the game so far, but it's it's been his other play that has also made a big difference in this game. You talk about one-two, I think it's on, it's wearing a white jersey with a number 14 out there. Great job. Here's a red three-point attempt, this one no good. Williams off of the rebound for Gregory Portland. And this is a good G GP team for yes. uh, down uh, south of San Antonio. It's a good team. Uh, they're 17 and three coming in on here, and and it's just the Chargers are, are just just better. And so the the more possessions, the more separation. But uh, they came in here 17 and three, and it's they'll they'll win a few games here in the next two days. That's with a three point attempt, no good. But the rebound comes off to Burdick and the champion Chargers. Burdick once again on the dribble, trying to work it inside. Aaron Pass, Williams takes it away. Here's Jones on the dribble. Tries to put on a spin move. Oh, what effort. Ball knocked away. Yeah. Great athletic play by Huspeth. Boy, Trey sacrificing his body on that one. Yeah. Look at this. Here's the replay here on GBTC. Fantastic block and then making the dive toward the end. He actually ran into that bottom step there of the bleachers. Joshua Marquez and Quinn Grable now checking in for the Chargers. Here's a three-point attempt from Jones. Hits the rim, no good. Marquez with a rebound. And the Chargers are running. George Lowe's pulls things back to set up. He'll take it in. No, but a foul. I think they're going to get Pearson that time, and that is the case. Talked about his versatility earlier. Watch him here on the replay. When he gets down inside and he feels the contact, he goes up with his left hand. He didn't allow the contact to not allow him to get a shot off. He said, oh, yeah, I'm going to throw it up with my left hand, draw contact, and draw the foul. And that's exactly what he did. You know, they get to play so much now, and he played on the Mexico national team, uh, junior national team a couple of summers ago. And... So just all the games that they have now, they develop skills that, you know, everybody asks, what have you noticed? It's just that they're just, they're just so much more skilled yeah. every five years. And, and he's, he's a product of 
no telling how many games he's played and uh, just being able to do those things instinctly uh, make him special. Pearson to Jones as they try to feed it in the middle to Williams with that swarming Charger defense. They're going to get a foul though. So the Chargers pick up their first team foul here in the fourth quarter. That's impressive for as aggressive as they were in that third quarter. No team fouls in that period. And coming away with a steal that time. Of course, George Alonis. Speaking of rolling, it, it, you know, Coach, I hate I, – I'm not a fan of using cliches because, number right. one, number one, they're cliches, yes. right? And, and number two, as a broadcaster, you're taught, come on, you can come up with something better to say, right? Don't, right. don't get lazy and rely on cliches. But when I think of Charlie and just the early impressions are, he's just a basketball player. Yes. It just fits him. That term yep. fits him perfectly. He's just a basketball player. He's not the biggest guy in the gym. Nope. He's not the fastest guy in the gym. But, boy, when he gets on that court, everything from the dribble to the vision – to being able to create not only for himself but for others and then knowing where to be on the court at certain times. It's just, just a wonderful basketball player to watch. Well, he's, he sticks out. You Any experience at all, you walk in and you go, okay, he sticks out uh, in this game today. And, and talking about not using cliches, that's the other one that fits him. He's, he makes everyone better. Yeah. Uh, he's that type of player that makes everyone better. And the Chargers have the basketball. Speaking of, here is George Lowe's across the midcourt line. Get out right side, three-point attempt, no. And the rebound coming away to Hudspeth, who falls down but retains possession. Swing it around to Marquez. Up off glass, good for Quinn Grable. Grable's got four. Lead now at 22 for champion. Pass knocked away and stolen. Here's Burdick. George Los going to Hutsmith in the corner. His three is good. Trey I'm, I'm glad he looked for him. Uh, yes. He's done that two other times. I was glad he, he stayed with him. How about the impact that Trey Hutzman has had on this game, Coach, just from the hustle plays to the energy he's brought, knocking down the three there on the baseline. Well, I like you mentioning Trey because I think in the playoffs, uh, his athleticism, his quickness, uh, I like him getting more minutes. And I think in a tournament like this, a classic, it, it gets him an opportunity to get the ne needed minutes he's going to need for a good run. Shot off glass from Pearson, no good. The rebound comes off to Champion. Here's Grable dribbling. Taking it down in the paint, off the glass and good, and he'll go to the free throw line. The five days off didn't hurt the Chargers, guys. <laughs> they they no. look pretty sharp. They're passing the ball, and uh, it's uh, the first game. Uh, those five days off may have been good, may have given them some rest. Bayless picks up the foul there as Barrett checks in the game, giving Miles Bayless a breather. Two team fouls on Gregory Portland. As Grable converts the and one. Five for the quarter, seven for the game for Quinn Grable. And the lead all of a sudden now at 28. Here's Hutzbeth. Hutzbeth off glass, no, but the whistle on the foul, they're going to get Barrett. Well, in the season of giving, I think Trey has decided he's given up his body. <laughs> <laughs> he's done that a couple of times. We were about yeah. to lose him over here in the corner a while ago. <laughs> Spent half his time on the floor here throughout this second half. Hutzman's first free throw hits the front of the rim and bounces away. No good. He's got another attempt coming. Big three just moments ago for Hutzman. He'll convert this one. He's got four in the quarter. The 6 27. The coach is still running 2 2 1, even with a big lead, because 
You know, they need these guys like Trey to, to get some good quality minutes. Williams turns the ball over for Gregory Portland. Guess who? It's Hutzman on the dribble. Back out to George Lowe's. Here's a three-point attempt. No good. And Gregory Portland comes away with the rebound. Almost stolen that time as Burdick put his hand in to take the ball away. But the Wildcats running inside to Williams. Turnaround jumper. This one good. And a whistle and a foul. And they got... Burdick, he picks up his first second team foul on champion. And if you're noticing at home, well, how come Sean Williams has kind of disappeared in the second half? He played well in the first half. Well, the quick pace. We hear some whistles here. Logan Scott rolling, set to check in for Mr. Charlie Georgelos. But this quick pace that Champion is forced onto this game has really disallowed the Wildcats to get into a half-court set, and so the Chargers have essentially neutralized the 6-7 advantage that, uh, and skill that Sean Williams has around the basket. That's true, and they've also played a, a stifling defense inside, which I'd like that to kind of shut down the scoring threat of Williams because at 6-7, that young man... Certainly make his way in the paint. That's a three-point attempt falling true for Grable. Chargers do such a good job of finding each other in that corner, and they they go in to go out. Whistle on the foul. We'll check this. Look at the instant replay. They nice set shot for Quinn. Nice form, knocking it down. So I believe the foul was called on Hutspeth. Here's a jumper, no good. And the rebound comes away to Champion. And on the dribble, it's Scott. Scott tries to go back to Burdick. Nothing doing there as Jones puts his hands up and steals the ball for Gregory Portland. Up off the glass and good. They're going to count that basket. And they got Grable. He picks up his first. Yeah, Maddox Verrett getting inside. One of the few buckets the Wildcats have been able to pick up inside that didn't come courtesy of Sean Williams. Such a presence inside. And so Maddox doing a nice job of finding his way in there and then getting the end one opportunity, though he misses the free throw. Charlie Georgelos checking back in for the Chargers. Three minutes left to go in a contest that has been all champion, mainly dominated by champion here in the second half. That's out Georgelos and back out to Grable. Trying to eat some of that clock. Here's Georgelos, right-handed dribble, playing catch with Grable. Barrett, Gregory Portland out to guard. Here comes the mood on down the lane and in for Quinn Grable. Excellent. And that middle of the lane there, Coach, wide open because of the aforementioned spacing of the Chargers. Oh, yes. And don't you know, from GP side, they said, hey, don't let those guys open. Well, so they're not going to leave them. Said, if I go pinch in, he's going to kick out anyway. And so that lane was wide open. Yeah, just to the naked eye, it, it really is not only impressive, but it's fun to watch this Chargers offense move without the ball. You know, they pass and then, as you're always taught, pass and then move away from the ball in this constant motion. There's always a guy there on the ba on either baseline. There's always another guy at the top of the key, someone floating around in the lane. And before you know it, they move. Each player moves with the ball. Before you know it, it's it's a concert of of offensive mobility and offensive movement and it's it really is fun to watch Chris at coach uh, Chris Adam it can't say enough for the job he's done with this Chargers offense you know coach Leach talking about how that's a big reason why even though they're not the biggest team around they're able to to be so successful offensively you know we were mentioning style of play coach Adam played for me you know he was our point guard on the 1990 team yep. that played for the state championship against uh, Dallas Lincoln 
Uh, and then, of course, also the biggest upset, one of the biggest upset in, in state tournament history. He was key that night. I, I want to compliment Chris on the style. He, he learned this style at Harlandale. He was the head basketball coach there for 15 years. And they didn't have bigs. But many years uh, he competed against Kerrville in the, the regional final four. And he, he beat us several times. And he brought that style here. It wasn't a style that uh, I had uh, the 10 years I was coach here. So I really want to compliment him bringing a style that has fit uh, our players and our team the last six years. Three-point attempt, no, and the ball stolen. Good defensive play that time by Preston Lee, who's in the game for champion. Lee appears to be okay. He came crashing he in. Did. Almost, um, He almost took out Bo Wick. Merry Christmas, Bo. He did. Well, <laughs> I think Bo's okay. Bo showed his the, athleticism. He the, responded very <laughs> well. Right? Let's be Jeremy Lebrens to the free throw line for Gregory Portland. That one hits the rim and bounces away, no good. In the last couple of years, because coach hasn't had bigs, they and they work on it. That just doesn't happen. Right. It takes a lot of uh, early morning shooting and a lot of skill work. Uh, but that was how they were competitive at Harlandale. Was they had all those guards. Uh, now they use the more aggressive uh, defensive style at Harlandale here. Uh, it just wasn't a, a fit for uh, our our athletes, and so they've gone to more of a, you know, just a really an ordinary two three. Uh, they they extended out, uh, and they've done a good job of matching up the last uh, couple of years too. Yeah, whether you know, looking at the two three, whether it's been Brig Jones or or Baden Burdick there occupying that uh, that lane on, on the back end of the 2-3. Both of them are doing a nice job of applying pressure along with the top two guys. And in this case specifically, you could tell in the early going, Sean Williams wasn't comfortable. It wasn't until the, oh, second, no. it wasn't until the second quarter <laughs> that he maybe began to, and some substitutions, that he maybe began to to find a little bit of space and kind of a niche as to, okay, these are, these are my spots here. But in the early going, that champion D making it very, very tough for him. And that's the philosophy of 2-3 is people all play man. And so you never attack a 2-3 very seldom. And there's only a few ways to attack a zone. Uh, and it's easy for us to play defense out of it because we know the only ways to attack it. Here's the right side, Ross. On the dribble is Coach Chris Adamick's gone to his bench, giving some of these other young men a shot. There's Cole Reha trying to take the ball up. He's going to go to the free throw line. And that's what tournaments are for. Tournaments are also, you know, to get some good work. Uh, you get more work here than you would practice, and also get those guys minutes that are going to help you in a long district race and it is a race with Wagner and Veterans Memorial and Piper Ranch and Kerrville and so uh, they're about to get into a, a heavy Tuesday Friday Tuesday Friday uh, race. These free throw attempts a reward of sorts for for Cole Reha here specifically within the last couple of minutes doing a very nice job of setting picks and then rolling to the basket, away from the ball, doing everything you're taught to. And so Cole, very fundamentally sound, getting those two free throw opportunities here. And that one's stolen. That's Nick Georgelos checking in. Up off glass that time for Ross, no good. Yes, and this is also a good opportunity for Nick. Uh, normally on the JV and tournaments, you can bring him up and and get him some uh, some minutes during the holidays. He's a sophomore. Goes 6-1. There's Cole rolling. Reed has a little floater. He is good. He's got three. 64-22 champion now under a minute left. Get that one out, trying to work it inside. Here's a three-point attempt. Off the rim, no. Durant trying to work it inside. Just couldn't convert. Here's a three-point attempt. 
up off glass. This one finally falls true. As Philine gets in the scoring. Has his first bucket of the game. 64-34 champion. They'll go on to win this one this afternoon. Their first action of the tournament. There's Scott keeping possession in as Gregory Gordon scrambles for it. And time runs out, and that is your final. It's champion 64, Gregory Portland 34 in their first action this afternoon. Fantastic showing for, for these champion chargers. Coach Stan Leach here mentioning five days off. You would have never known it, Coach. You would have never known that Christmas was just two days ago and that they got a little little downtime with their families and coming out here and an absolutely beautiful offensive display here. Aggressive defense, as we talked about just moments ago. But all in all, just an impressive win against the Gregory Portland team that you mentioned has 17 wins already yeah. coming into the season. So Gregory Portland very good in its own right, but champion really showing why in the early season uh, aspect of the schedule, they've already knocked off so many San Antonio teams, and we'll talk about that here in our second uh, champion boys broadcast that we'll have later on today. Yes, we will, and they may have been outside uh, at their baskets at home a few times because <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you, you don't uh, just uh, not shoot the ball for five days and be able to do what they did, but uh, it was a great first game for them. It's a great game for GP, too, and that's why GPs came north to this tournament uh, so that uh, they can see some things that they may see uh, in the first and second round of the playoffs because they are a playoff team uh, in South Texas. Once again, big win for champion as they knock off Gregory Portland, and the coverage continues here from the Bernie ISD Holiday Tournament. For the Bernie ISD Athletic Director, Coach Stan Leach, and Hector Ledesma, I'm Roland J. Reese. Thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for more action right here on the Chargers Network and GBTC. You have access to a reality-bending GBTC AR experience. Go to levelup.gvtc.com. Select either a Ranger, Charger, Warrior, or Greyhound. Place your athlete in whatever environment you want to interact with them. Change the angle you see them by moving your phone. You can even screen capture a portrait with your athlete. Tap the Explore GVTC button for even more cutting edge products that can help connect you to the world. You have access to a reality-bending GVTC AR experience. Go to levelup.gvtc.com. Select either a Ranger, Charger, Warrior, or Greyhound. Place your athlete in whatever environment you want to interact with them. Change the angle you see them by moving your phone. You can even screen capture a portrait with your athlete. Tap the Explore GVTC button for even more.